Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I am Jonathan Little. Today, we have a nice topic because I know a lot of you are telling me that you are stuck at home. Well, conveniently, I'm pretty good at being stuck at home. For those who don't know, I've done lots of work over the last um, 10 years working from home. I wrote or had my hands in all of those books right there. So that was a lot of work. Also, I made a training site. I've done a lot of things over the last 10 years working from home. So today we're gonna to be sharing my tips to help you be maximally productive from home. And by the end of this, there's actually a decent chance that you are more productive working from home than you are working from work. Probably not what your employer wants, but you know, if you proved your employer that you were better working from home than you are working from work, then well, maybe they'll start to let you work from home assuming that's what you want. So um, before we get started, I'm giving away money. I'm giving away $1,500. You all like $1,500. So um, you can enter that giveaway at pokercoaching.com slash giveaway. If that link does not work for you for some reason, then you can find a direct link at twitter.com slash Jonathan Little. Just scroll down there and you will do that. Or you can find that. Also, I have a big sale on many of my most popular products, including Poker Coaching and Poker Coaching Premium. You can check that out at pokercoaching.com slash lucky because, well, St. Patrick's Day is coming up. I'm not sure if the humans have been so lucky recently. To be fair, there's a chance we played poorly as well. But um, we're having a lucky sale, so check that out at pokercoaching.com slash lucky. So pokercoaching.com slash giveaway for $1,500. We're actually giving that away um, in... 11 chunks, one $500 prize, which also gets a year of poker coaching premium, and then 10, yes, 10 $100 prizes that also get six months of poker coaching premium. So I didn't even mention the poker coaching premium there. We're giving away, what, $7,000 worth of poker coaching premium for all of you. Because again, I know you're stuck at home. You have some free time. So I figured why not let some of you spend all of your time studying and getting better at poker. All right, so first things first. How do you be maximally productive from home? Well, number one, I think this is probably the most important thing, is to dedicate a work space for your house. And that workspace needs to be, it's very important that it is somewhere kind of quiet, like you don't wanna have a workspace right in the middle of the kitchen or in the middle of the living room where your kids are there jumping on top of you, right? And also ideally it can be a little bit closed off. So I'm actually in a closet. I know this doesn't look like a closet, made this into an office but this is a closet it has no ventilation it has a see-through door which is not ideal but it's all i have let's see if i can show you my see-through door let's see there it is there's the see-through door right there so um not the ideal office but it works right and you can really make anything work here you can make a corner of your uh, bedroom work usually your bedroom is not so trafficked right like no one's running through your bedroom on a regular basis and you can just take a corner of that put a little desk there and um, designate it as your workspace you can even use like the corner of your uh your dresser right pull up a chair it's not ideal but it's gonna be way better than trying to work on the living room floor with the tv on in front of you right so that is very important next you want to set work hours People always ask me, how do you get so much done? And um, in addition to having a dedicated space, it is also, I work from nine till six every day. Literally, 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. every single day, I'm working when I'm at home. And that's what I'm doing. I'm doing this right now, right? It's 9 a.m., get started. Actually, I usually start a little bit earlier. I usually start about 8.30 a.m. because, um, you know, I have to prepare this talk. But you need to make sure you set hours. What a lot of people do is they say, all right, I'm gonna start working from home. Then they wake up late, first off. They normally wake up at 6 a.m. to go to work. They wake up at like 9 a.m. because hey, they can, right? No boss is checking in on them. Next, they goof off and watch TV until noon. Then they have lunch. Then they decide, you know what? I'm gonna go out for a walk. Then they go out for a walk. Next thing you know, it's 3 p.m. They haven't done anything. Like, oh my God, it's 3 p.m. I haven't done anything. I guess I might as well just take the rest of the day off. And then inevitably they do that all the time when they're working from home and they get fired. Well, if instead you treat this like a job and you realize that I am going to wake up at the normal time, I'm going to do my work, 
then I think that's going to be way more productive than if you don't have a schedule at all. Now, your schedule doesn't necessarily have to be 9 till 5. Your schedule can certainly be, you know, 2 till 10 or 9 till noon and then from 8 p.m. until 2 a.m., whatever works for you, right? But you need to have a schedule. And if you have a schedule, you'll find that you will stick to it and get your work done way better than if you don't have a schedule and don't stick to anything. Congrats on my award. Well, thank you. Thank you for giving it to me. I want back there. The... Um, Poker Personality of the Year Award, thanks to all of you. You all voted on it, and we won. So that's good. And I basically won that from sitting here in this office being productive. Don't forget, you know, we, we stay here, we work hard for all of you. And you know what? If you work hard for lots of people, they will inevitably reward you in ways that you would never even think possible. So thanks for all that. Okay, so we have dedicated space in your home to be your workspace, set work hours next. Start the morning off right. It's very important to realize that if you don't start the morning off right, well, it's easy to squander the day, right? So what I suggest you do is wake up like you normally would if you were going to work. Take care of whatever family issues you have, right? Like I have to wake up at 6 a.m. and take care of the kids until 8.30, which is fine. You know, I'm happy to do that. Um, if you don't have kids, it's probably way easier to have a nice breakfast, get dressed, have some coffee, go to the gym, meditate. Those kinds of things will get you in the good standard working mood. And if you're in the good standard working mood, then you'll be usually better off when it comes to actually starting to get to work. I personally found that having this show, a little coffee, helps me get to work. I wake up, have my coffee, have like an hour or so just to kind of, um, you know, think through the day, think through what I'm going to do, think through a topic. Maybe I'll make a video out of this. I probably will make a video out of this one because it's, it's a good one. It's like work, right? You, you, you go ahead and start getting the day going. So make sure you start the day off right. Next, take breaks. I think it is highly important that you take some breaks. Very few people can work for eight hours straight. Now, I do think that online poker tournament players are actually particularly good at working long hours straight because really when you play online poker, you don't actually get all that many breaks if you're sitting there 16 tabling, right? You get five minutes every hour and you'll do that for 16 hours a day, right? So I think I'm probably better than most just like sitting down and grinding. And what I actually do, I would not suggest for most people. Um, I wrote down what I like kind of do. So what I, what I typically do when things are not flowing is I'll have a two hour block, right? So I'll have four to five two hour blocks a day. And every two hours, I will make a point to get up, walk out of this office, stretch, have some water, maybe have a little snack, maybe go outside for a quick walk, something like that. And basically you just wanna get away from your computer because if you sit here and stare at your computer all day, every day, you're gonna go nuts. Now, when I'm in the zone, which often is what happens when I'm writing a book, making a training course, and I'm like actually here with it, um, I'll sit here all day. And I'll just grind hard all day. Uh, there'll be days where I just like won't even eat because I'll be in the zone working. That is not for everyone. I get it. So um, that's not what I'm recommending. I instead recommend the method I use whenever I'm not feeling very, very perfectly motivated. Um, and I think that's going to work for most people. One thing it's worth mentioning as a tangent here is that I'm very motivated to do my work. Because I know if I don't do my work, I don't get paid. Whereas a lot of people at a lot of jobs, they can kind of just slack by a little bit. And like if they don't do their work for a few days, nobody really cares. To be fair, if I don't do my work for a few days, nobody cares. I probably have a job where I can just disappear off the face of the earth for the next six months. And most of you wouldn't even notice. Besides, I wouldn't do this show and my webinars. But I am highly motivated because you all highly motivate me. Because I'm not really working for just me. I'm working for all of you. And I realize it's a little bit different than a lot of people who work for a corporation because a lot of people may not even like the corporation they're working for. They work because they have a job. So a lot of these tips really are to just help you be motivated and stay on task. Whereas like I personally don't really need that, but I do think a lot of people do. Um, okay, next, stay connected with people. Whenever you are at home sitting in your office, that's gonna be very different than if you are out and about in the world talking to friends around the water cooler or in the kitchen at, the, at your work, right? And I think that after a while, that type of, I guess call it isolation, that type of quarantine <laughs> may start to impact you a little bit. I think I'm very good at this because again, I've played my three years straight of online poker, not talking to anyone. And 
I'm used to this. Uh, whenever my wife works from home, she's always like, oh my gosh, I have to get out. I have to go for a walk. I have to get some fresh air. And I'm like, I haven't been outside in three days. <laughs> it doesn't bother me at all. So again, I may not be the target audience for this, but I do think you want to make sure you're staying connected with people. Um, so, you know, make group chats with your friends from work. Maybe you talk on Discord or Skype or WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever, right? Find a way to stay connected. That said, that said, do not let this become a distraction because distractions, which are my next topic, are very detrimental to getting your work done. So make sure you don't spend all of your time sitting on, on um, Skype talking with your friends. That can go a long way to getting you in, in a lot of trouble. But I do think it's important that you still maintain connections with the people that you love. And, you know, pick up the phone, call your family, call people you haven't talked to in a while. I mean, this is a, a prime time for that because a lot of people are sitting around doing nothing. Do you ever cook? Oh, we're going to get on that one in just a minute. Next. Okay, speaking of distractions, whatever they are, get rid of them. Maybe that's the show. Maybe a little coffee. You need to turn it off if it distracts you all day and you don't get your work done because of it. That said, um, distractions are things that suck away your time that you usually indulge in on like weekends or maybe during your normal work day that just consume time and don't really produce anything. Some good examples of this are TV, video games, social media, right? These things don't really produce much and they suck away a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time, right? So personally, I'll tell you a time suck I used to have that I killed recently. I used to play a five minute game of Hearthstone during my breaks. Remember I said I'd have breaks during the day? Seems harmless to, you know, play a five-minute game during your breaks, but I lack discipline. Sometimes that would turn into two or three games. Then Hearthstone made a game where they, that takes like 30 minutes. So now, like, I play one 30-minute game every two hours. Am I really going to sit here and play 30 minutes worth of Hearthstone every two hours? Well, no, that's asinine, right? And, now look, I'm not going to say that you should not indulge in hobbies or whatnot, but realize that during your work hours, this is work time. This goes back to the idea of a lot of people's actual job, they aren't actually working all the time. They're watching Facebook. They're playing on Hulu or, you know, they're, they're like goofing off. And, you know, if you're goofing off a lot, you're not actually being all that productive. And in order to be maximally productive, I do think you need to get rid of the things that suck away your time and distract you from the work that needs to be done. For example, I've had this tournament masterclass I've needed to make for the last two or three months now. And it takes like the ability to sit down and focus, right? The ability to sit down and focus and do the work. And if you are constantly thinking, oh, I want to go play a Hearthstone game or I want to check social media or I want to see what my friends are doing on Facebook, that kind of thing is going to make it to where you don't ever get big projects done. You know, Sam, I actually had an email here on my list initially, but I decided to not mention it. So um, Sam says, don't check your email constantly. And I completely agree with that. I check my email about four times per day. And I think that's probably even too much. To be fair, I have like a very email heavy business. I read all of your emails that you send me. So, I mean, I get hundreds a day. But um, I, I do not think you want to have your, like, your email up refreshing all the time. Because every time that comes in, it's like someone saying, I think your attention is better spent on what I want you to spend it on than what you want to be spending it on. And that's just not true, right? And you know, they're not necessarily even saying that. You're saying that their needs are more important than yours by having the email up. And uh, that's not necessarily good. So make a point to focus on what really matters during your work hours, which is your work. I see all of you typing in lots of nice messages, lots of questions. We will get to them. I'm your mentor. You are awesome. Well, I do my best. Thank you. If you're enjoying this, click like, click subscribe, share it with your friends. I'd appreciate it. Someone asked, what do I like to cook? Well, the next idea is to embrace delivery food. I personally don't cook anything anymore. I used to cook. I like cooking. I don't have anything against cooking. But think about the time sucks throughout your day. What sucks away time? Well, for most people at most jobs, they lose. They straight up lose an hour each day getting up, going somewhere, buying food, eating it, and then coming back. An hour, a whole hour they lose. What's that? A seventh of your time, an eighth of your time, a ninth of your time by not embracing delivery. And I mean, you have to ask, like, do I actually enjoy these things? Do I like getting up and walking outside and standing in line and then ordering food? 
And my answer is obviously no. I do not like that. I don't like waiting in line because you don't get a whole lot done when you're waiting in line. If you have to wait in line, maybe you listen to podcasts, right? Maybe you do work while you're waiting in line, et cetera, et cetera. But an easy way to get an extra day, an extra extra hour every day is to never have to worry about dealing with getting food. So you may say, but isn't that more expensive? Yeah, it is. But what is an extra hour of your time worth? Think about this. Say you make 20 bucks an hour at your job and you can order delivery food for $12, right? Well, now if regular food not delivered costs what? $8, let's pretend. You're paying $4 for an extra hour of your time. You think your time's worth $4 an hour? Well, probably, right? I mean, some of you out there, your time is worth hundreds of dollars an hour. And... Think about it. At that point, you are essentially paying whatever your hourly rate is, minus $4, for the experience of cooking the food. And to me, it's just not worth it. To some of you, it is though, right? I mean, I used to love cooking food. So actually, I had a joke with my wife the other day about how she's like, when are you ever going to cook for me again? I'm like, probably never. <laughs> Literally, probably never. And that's just because it's not a good use of my time at this point in my life. I'd rather be spending my time hanging out with my kids. I'd rather be spending my time making content for you than standing over a stove. And I even kind of like cooking, but it's still not worth it, right? Kind of like playing Hearthstone games. I like it. It's just not worth it. I'd way rather play a Hearthstone game than go cook. So, you know, would I pay $4 to play an hour of Hearthstone? Yes, I would. <laughs> so it's all about prioritization and collecting meals, cooking meals often is just not a good use of your time, even though everyone does it. Almost everyone who works any regular job does this. And they try to justify it by saying, I'm going to go outside, I'm going to stretch my legs, I'm going to talk to my friends, whatever. Call it what you want to call it. You're taking an hour and you're not using it productively. All right. Next, request the proper equipment. If you work from home, especially if you're going to be working from home for the next month or so, because, well, your office is closed, you need to make sure you have the correct equipment to get whatever job you have done. If you have a bad work from home computer, request a good one. If you need to make recordings and calls, maybe you request a microphone, right? If, um, you know, what, whatever you need for your job. If you need a good printer because you print lots of documents for some reason, maybe ask for a printer. You need to ask your employer for the things you need to be maximally productive. And you know, most employers may not give you a super sick printer for your house, but hey, every once in a while they might give you a decent one. And it really doesn't hurt to ask because you're not asking out of greed or anything. You're asking out of necessity because if you have a printer that prints four times as fast, well, maybe you'll just be a little bit more productive and that adds up over time. Um, so request whatever you need. And if like, say you do have a job where you work at a computer at your office, Request a computer for your home. Almost every like major company will give you a work from home computer if you request it, assuming your job actually requires it. Because you can even say, like, I don't like carrying this computer home every day. It's a, it's a pain. So request the proper equipment. Now, if you're self-employed, you're going to have to buy your own equipment. And in t think about it like this. In terms of things that you actually use on a regular basis, what do you really use every single day? Well, I use this microphone every day. I use this computer and this monitor every day. I use this desk. I use this chair. These are things I use every single day. And I want to make sure that I am not only comfortable, but using things that produce reasonably high quality work that also let me be maximally productive. And I'm happy to spend money on stuff like this. Other things that I'm happy to spend money on, a bed. You sleep in your bed every day. Shoes. Get comfortable shoes right? These are things that you will use literally every single day. And you want to make sure you are spending money on the things that actually impact your life. Um, some things you probably don't want to spend money on, things that you don't use very often. Think about any of that, right? Like Jonathan Lowe, does he need nice pots and pans? Not really, because um, I don't cook very often, like we just said earlier. Does Jonathan Little need... Um, a nice TV to watch TV on? Not really. Jonathan Little doesn't... Uh, doesn't watch so much TV, so I don't really need a nice TV. Do I need, um, I don't know, insert anything? Do I actually need nice blank? Well, probably not, right? Next, this is another important one, something I'm going to be 
dealing with my wife coming up, and I already deal with it with my kids. If two or more people are going to be working from home, make sure you are all on the same page because you're in this together. You are a team. You are tasked, essentially, by both of your bosses to share your workspace effectively. And I only have one office here, and my wife and I have to share it. So sometimes she'll have work calls, and she'll say, look, I need the office for the work call. I'll give it to her. It's not ideal, but it is what it is. Sometimes I'll say, I have a webinar today, and she'll deal with it, right? And we actually don't even have the best setup. So what I do is I, I take my computer when I need to, and I go into the bedroom, and I have a chair there, and I will put it on my dresser and turn that into a little makeshift desk. Not ideal, but it is what it is because I am in this with my wife and we have to cooperate and we have to make the most out of our situation. And you're going to find that if you learn to communicate and cooperate with your housemates, you're going to be happy and productive. And if you don't learn to communicate with them, it's not going to go so well. Same thing with kids, right? Um, I definitely suggest, like I said, you have an office that is somewhat closed off, not so hectic. I have a giant glass door here. It's not ideal. Um, I wish I had a giant wooden door or metal door that I could just shut and lock, but that's not the world I live in. Um, that said, my office is kind of kind of closed off. There's the, No one's like running into it all day, right? So, so it's okay. But you want to make sure your kids understand, you know, daddy or mommy's home and I have to work during this period of time. Um, presumably someone else is going to be taking care of them, right? Now, if you have to take care of your kids and work, now you have a problem because that's kind of two jobs and it's hard to do two jobs. Um, I guess I'm presuming that you have help taking care of the kids. If that's the case, then that's that. Let's off poker, enough philosophy. This is poker. I don't know if you're aware of this, but a lot of people play poker from home. So many people have told me, oh man, poker's, uh, I, I don't seem to ever win at online poker, why? And I, I like ask them like, and they show me hand histories where they just do stupid things. Like, oh yeah, I was cooking dinner then. Or, oh yeah, my kids wanted to look at a video on my computer then. Or something happened and I had to get up and leave the computer. Like, oh, well you're a fish because you don't know what you're doing, right? You are prioritizing all sorts of nonsense over your poker games, no wonder you lose. And all of these work from home tips apply to online poker players. And believe it or not, you all may not be playing a whole lot of live poker in the near future. So be aware. All right, um, next. We're almost done, by the way. Then I'll go back and answer all your questions. You have to have discipline, especially if you never worked from home before. It is going to require that you embrace the idea of delayed gratification. We are going to do our work now to get our paycheck later. We're not going to play a video game now or check social media now because it doesn't really do us any good, right? If you can stay on task and get your work done, you're going to find that you are actually probably way more productive from home than you would be going to an office. I purposely work from home for a few reasons. What are the main reasons? You know the main reason? You all may not even know the main reason. Think about the main reason Jonathan Little would actually want to work from home. Actually, two reasons. I'll tell them to you now. One, I hate commuting. I adamantly hate commuting because kind of like getting up and going and getting food, it's just a pure waste of your time unless you enjoy the walk or the car ride or whatnot. So... There are plenty of good office spaces in New York City that I've been offered for free or cheap. It's actually a really sweet um, office in the Helmsley building. It's like my favorite building in the city from the outside. I don't even know what it looks like on the inside, but I was offered a sound studio and everything for like almost no money. And I turned it down. Why? Because it's a 30 minute walk each way. And I'm not gonna burn an hour each day walking. I could take a car, then it takes 15 minutes. It's not worth it. That's number one. Number two, I actually like to be able to spend a little bit of time with my kids. My kids are young and um, I like the idea of me being able to go out and hang out with them for a few minutes multiple times throughout the day. Say hi, check in on them, et cetera, et cetera. Not because I'm worried that they're doing something wrong, but because I want to say hello to them. So that is why I particularly enjoy working from home. But I've also found that I am very, very, very productive from home because I have all of these rules in place. These are 10 tips I gave you today to help you be 
as productive as I am, but really it all does kind of boil down to discipline. You have to be willing to do what you need to do to get the job done. So let's recap it. Dedicate a space to your home for work. Set work hours. Start your morning off right as if you're going to go to work because you are. Take breaks that make logical sense. Stay connected to other humans. Get rid of your distractions. Or number six, I suppose. Get rid of your distractions. Um, request the proper equipment. Embrace food delivery and pretty much delivery of all things. I don't go grocery shopping anymore because it takes time, right? Learn to cooperate with other people at your workplace, at your home, your significant other, your kids, etc., and have discipline. If you do these 10 things, you'll be productive like me. And I am um, very, very productive. I'm not going to necessarily say I'm the most productive person in poker, but I'm probably up there. And that's because I have de developed a strategy that allows me to do what I want, which is not waste time commuting. And also, it allows me to stay home with my kids. All right, let's check out all these things you were saying. How many tournaments do you win per week? It's a weird question. Do you not know who you're talking to here? I do not play tons of online poker because I'm in New York City, and I do not want to play small stakes poker tournaments. You see a Hard Rock trophy. Yeah, there's a Hard Rock trophy. I want a $2,000 turbo. It's actually funny. I had a bunch of chips. Then I lost with uh, Ace, King, Dace, Queen to lose for like 5x average or 8x average or some huge amount right before the re-entry period. I re-entered. I had like 12 big blinds. So I went from like 100 to 12. Then I um, took the blinds immediately. So I'm down to like eight. And then I just won every hand after that. So that was fun. Over order when you order takeout and support these restaurants. That's actually an interesting idea, right? Like given this period of time, should we be supporting the local businesses? I definitely think we should. Um, that said, I order lunch and dinner every day. Sometimes I'll order lunch and dinner at the same time, but I literally order lunch and dinner every single time. Which are the 10 things that make working from home productive? I literally just went through them. I'm not gonna read them again. You can go back and watch this on YouTube if you'd like, youtube.com slash poker coaching. Let's see. You're all crushing the games. Good, good, good. You all voted for me. Thank you. Maybe you'll vote for me next year too. That would be good. My goal is to have a whole shelf devoted to these awards that you all give me because that shows that you all appreciate me. That said, next year, I think I'm actually live to win an award for my book, Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em Games. Here, I'll show you, show you the cover. It is a sweet book. It is finally coming together. It's taken forever, but we are getting there. It's me with many of the best players in the world. These are all, for the most part, online players, although many of them have transitioned to live poker, and they are crushers. We have John Van Fleet, one of the biggest winners in online poker. We have Giraffe Ganger, one of the top 10 online players in the world. We have Cavalito, who crushes live poker, crushes online poker. Many other people. We have Rob Tenyon's won the Sunday Million two times, and um, I'm very, very happy about that. What book is James working on? I don't know. James is out scootering right now. Interestingly enough, he actually had spring break planned for the next two weeks, so that lined up nicely. Should you read Excelling at No Limit Hold'em or Modern Poker Theory? They're very different books. If you can only get one, are you um, trying to learn GTO or are you not? If you're trying to learn GTO, get that. But yeah, don't, don't have your email up all day. I think email is definitely a distraction for most people, especially if you get a bunch of nonsense emails. Which was my best book for a beginner? How beginner are you? Are you very beginner? Or are you not such a very beginner? Would I recommend online poker as a side hustle as a pair compared to live? Well, you probably can't play a whole lot of live poker right now, and you probably shouldn't unless you want to get a virus. You thought online poker is a scam. Online poker is not a scam. Well, some of the sites may scam you, but um, online poker is not a scam if you play on the good sites. If you want me to check you out on Instagram, send me a message on Instagram, at jcardshark. How strong of a chess player am I? Not very. Thoughts on Doug Polk trying to talk poorly about people in the poker community for the millionth time? That's how he operates. He loves trashing people in the poker community for no reason. That's how some people operate. There's this idea in marketing that um, one way to attract fans is to just like talk very poorly about lots and lots of people. And inevitably... 
some people will like you. The problem, though, is that that doesn't work so well in the long run because everybody likes somebody to some extent. And when you start talking poorly about people that people like, they stop to they start they stop liking you. Which, as you see in the poker community, that's why he's kind of been ostracized to some extent. Like no actual good poker player wants to work with him at this point because he talks so poorly about a lot of people. So it's kind of come to bite him in the butt, and he's left poker maybe because of this. Is a plus EV to jam fours in the big blind against an under the gun open for nineteen big blinds? Probably not. There's this concept, you don't uh, sh you don't poop where you eat. And um, if you work in a space, any space, you probably don't want to be pooping all over that space. That's um, common sense for most people, but not so much for others. You hate commuting. Yeah, commuting's rough. Um, it is worth mentioning, if you have to commute, I realize some people have to commute, that you really want to make sure you use that time wisely. Um, whenever I travel to play poker tournaments, like I'll fly somewhere for a day, I will download lots of videos on YouTube, usually pertaining to marketing, some of them pertaining to Magic the Gathering for fun. It's kind of like goof-off time in the airport. I'll also listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I listen, I watch a lot of YouTube videos while I am um, traveling, and it, it makes it not so bad. At what point do you feel a person is ready to begin poker as a business when they don't have to ask me that question? If you already have a giant bankroll... If you already um, are crushing your games, then, then it might be a reasonable time to start up. Do I have any bonuses right now? Well, we have discounts for PokerCoaching.com. Go to PokerCoaching.com slash lucky, and you can get a solid discount. Does your wife not know how to cook? I cook significantly better than my wife does. My wife makes uh, probably more money than me at this point. She is the senior vice president of tax for GE Capital, so she also does not have time to cook. All right, all right, all right. Did I write a sit and go book? No. I had a site, um, pokercoaching.com, that actually came from a site called sngicons.com. We used to beat all the sit and goes. We crushed the sit and goes. And um, we made a site for that and we ruined the sit and goes. So now sit and goes aren't all that profitable. So given sit and goes are not all that profitable, there's no real point in writing a book on them, in my opinion. That said, there is a good book by, I think his name is Phil Shaw, made by DMB Poker. Go to dnbpoker.com, look in the books. I'm sure it'll come right up. Are there discounts for existing members? If anyone wants to upgrade to a one-year membership at Poker Coaching or Poker Coaching Premium, then uh, yes, those are all there. Just go to pokercoaching.com slash lucky. Also, we have a giveaway. I'm giving away $500 to one person and then $100 to 10 other people at pokercoaching.com slash giveaway. What are my thoughts on... ACR. I think it's um, one of the best sites you could possibly play on within America, assuming assuming you don't mind your money being taken at some point in the future, and you don't mind playing with bots, and you don't mind the site going down, and you don't mind their um, CEO talking poorly about people in the poker community on the internet. Um, so if you don't mind all those things, then uh, it's probably okay. That said, keep the minimum amount of money on there, please, because otherwise they might run off with it. What's my thought on natural aid? I have no idea about what natural aid is. I know of it. I don't, I've never played on there or anything like that. When will live poker come back? Ooh, I don't know. Depends on how seriously the world takes the virus. If um, the world takes the virus very seriously, probably by May. If um, the world does not take the virus seriously, probably not quite a while. Good roast on ACR. We're not roasting ACR. We're just being honest with you here. I was told that one of this, some ACR pro made a video trying to belittle my work and make me look bad. And um, problem is a lot of people have thin skin, you know? And it's tough for a lot of people because I realize a lot of these people who are promoting things like ACR really have no other options to make money. And to be fair, ACR is probably paying them way more money to shill them than any other place would. And if you're young and you have no money and you have no potential beyond exactly shilling a poker site, I, I get it why you would do such a thing. That said, fortunately, I'm in a spot in life where I don't even have to worry about that because I have plenty of money now. And I also have plenty of fans who I love and want to give them the best chance of success. So, you know, be careful. Be careful out there. Do you have any good books on it, on in-depth ICM? Well, mod, um, Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em Games is going to have a great chapter on it. 
by Vlada. Absolute crusher. I learned a lot from it. So um, that'll be coming out in June, most likely. They do pay out sometimes, lol. Um, I did not say they did not pay out. I said they may... Well, they're definitely not going to pay out the last time, I can tell you that. The question is, when will the last time be? What do I think of 8 day Poker? Good, legitimate poker site. Have you heard about Global Poker? Yes, have I played there? Yes. Would I play there today? Absolutely not. Would I keep money on there? Absolutely not. I'd keep money on ACR before I kept it on Global Poker. Um, not that I've, I would keep literally no money on either of them, because I don't like losing my money. Why are sit and goes not profitable? Singles are not profitable. Well, listen, singles are profitable at the small stakes. So there's this idea that I'm always teaching my students. You want to make sure you're spending significant time learning a game with a future. Back in the day, there's this guy who was bragging about how he was the best six-handed PLO sit-and-go player in the world. He was so proud of himself. And I'm like, okay, cool. Maybe I'll look into these because I was a good sit-and-go player, right? I mean, if this guy's crushing the games, he told me he had like 40% ROI. I'm like, oh, I like 40% ROI. I did a little bit of research. Turns out, Two of these games ran each day at the $33 buy-in level. So that means this guy spent his whole three or four years getting good at these, this game, and he's making, what, 60 bucks a day? Something like that? Is that really what I want to spend my time on? The answer is probably not. Now, Singos are a very good practice, or a good, a good source of practice for final tables of tournaments because they kind of have a similar payout structure. It's not exact, but it's similar. And you do see a lot of the best players in the world today used to be sit-and-go players, right? And I do think that they are a good way to learn. The problem is, is that the game is not actually all that tough. And what happens is eventually no one's beating the rake. Once you get to like the $33 or $55 buy-in level, no one's beating the rake anymore online. So do you really want to play a game where you have to rely on the websites giving you rake back to make the game barely profitable? And the answer is no. You don't want that. As you see, when Stars took away Supernova Elite, they just screwed all those players. And all those players worked like a whole year and basically got nothing because the website decided to take away their money. And I don't want that to happen to you. So why am I recommending you don't do that? That's exactly why I'm recommending you don't do that because I don't want you all to get screwed. And whenever you rely on somebody else to feed you, you could get screwed. For example, you all may just decide to stop buying my poker training stuff tomorrow. That would suck. Fortunately, we've diversified a bit to where it'll be okay. But you want to make sure that you... Don't have all your eggs in one basket. I mean, something a lot of like video bloggers are doing wrong right now, I think, is that they are very much relying on YouTube. And I like YouTube. I have no problem with YouTube. But maybe YouTube decides tomorrow they, that you are not going to be able to do anything pertaining to poker on there tomorrow, and they shut down. Right? Same thing with Amazon, right? Amazon tomorrow could decide they're not going to do anything pertaining to poker, and they're going to get it all off of that. And if you are not set up to deal with that situation, you're going to be in a pickle. And... It's important to realize that. How do you, re I recommend you spend your time when live poker is down. Study a lot. I know some of these sites have good, good, uh, like good value tournaments on Sundays. Maybe that's worth playing. I would tell you just to study a ton, right? Everyone's asking what I think about all these shady sites. Listen, there's a video, jonathanlittlepoker.com slash USA. It's a little bit harsh, but it's also very true. And I've had a few of the shills for these sites tell me that I'm wrong, et cetera, et cetera. It's always important to recognize the source, though. I'm not paid by anyone besides you all, and it's my job to look out for all of you, whereas the people who are trying to tell me that I'm incorrect about these things are paid a lot of money by the sites that it turns out I am not talking so fondly about. You always have to look where the incentives are, and my incentive is to help all of you. My incentive is not to help any online poker site, if they do poorly, I'm going to let you all know. And I mean, like, right right here, right? I'm not paid by 888, but I said it's a good, legitimate poker site. Party Poker is a good poker site. Poker Stars is a fine poker site. I don't like what they did with Supernova Elite back in the day, but they're not going to, like, run off and steal your money, and I'm not worried about the safety of my money in there, right? Also, I know they have good security practices, which is important to me. I don't want to be playing against colluders or bots or whatnot, and some sites are cool with that, and some sites aren't. Turns out whenever a company's ran by a few people in some random country, they're not so concerned with security compared to a company with a thousand employees with a gigantic security team devoted to it. So anyway, how do I suggest you spend your time? Well, first off, get your work done, right? Work from home, be productive. But at the same time, um, I would say that you should spend your time studying poker. That's a very good thing to do. 
If you have to ask about shady sites, it's probably not worth playing on them. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Vito. That is true to some extent. To some extent. Does it make sense to have tens in an under-the-gun 4-bat range versus a button 3-bat? No, probably not. Unless you're kind of shallow stacked, right? If you're shallow. Like, say you raise off 30 big blinds. The 2 big blinds, button makes it 7. It's probably okay to jam, I guess. But um, it's not a great spot to be in, that's for sure. Is there a software that records your poker hands? I use Hold'em Manager. It does not work for all sites. I know Party Poker just made it to where it does not work at all there, but they allow you to download hands like a month later or something like that. But I use Hold'em Manager. It's good. Poker Tracker's fine. It's basically the same thing. Any tips on spotting a bot? Um, no, I actually don't have many tips on this because I have purposely not played on sites that are known to be infested by bots. I don't think I've actually had any real run-ins too much with like colluding rings or bots or any of that. I know one time PokerStars has like randomly sent me 3,000 bucks or something saying that there was a colluding ring in the sentence goes, I was playing back in the day, but I mean, I was, I was like winning in the games. So it's like I'm beating the games and I'm getting colluded against. I mean, sure, right? <laughs> it's kind of nice if uh, they're cheating you and I'm still winning. Um, but I, I'm not the best person to ask for this. I would tell you to ask one of the ACR shells because they probably have to deal with it all the time. Yeah, you play on shady sites. You haven't won any money in a while where the games are probably tough, right? What do I think about South Florida as a place to grind cash games? I think it's probably a pretty good place to do it. I think um, South Florida is a good place. California is a good place. Vegas is a good place. Um, any place with a new casino is probably a pretty good place. Will I ever fold aces on a 7-2-2 board if the villain goes all in on the flop? Well, I guess it goes bet, raise, 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 all in. Yeah, I guess we fold at that point. Hey, James. Come here. James, come here. Come here, come here, come here. James has returned from scootering. You all haven't seen Mr. James in a while because he's normally out there um, at school, but he's on spring break. James, come here. James, come here. Come here, you want to be on the show for a minute? Uh, say hello to everybody. Oh, what do you have? Do you put your hat on? Oh, how cute. Can you say hello? Hello. Everyone's missed you. Look, look at this award that they gave to you. Isn't that nice? Can you say thank you so much for giving me this award? Thank you for me for the award. Do you like it? Yeah. What color is it? It's pink and yellow. Pink and yellow? Yeah. It does look pink and yellow on the TV. It's actually silver and gold. What are you on right now? Why are you not at school? Break. Yeah, spring break. Nice. Do you like spring break? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Who's watching you today? A grandpa. Do you love it when grandpa watches you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You can go um, take off your shoes and get cleaned up. Can you give me a kiss? Um, I want to stay here. You want to stay here? Yeah. <sighs> stay here. Everyone says they like you. Look, they gave you a they gave you a heart. You see the heart? Yep. They gave you a heart, and they say they like your hat. Who's on your hat? Cookie Monster. You like Cookie Monster? Go are you are you an internet celebrity? Cookie Monster. C is for cookie. That's good enough for me. Yes. Well, look, I hope all of you are very productive during this time. I realize it's difficult. What are your tips to work from home? Yeah, don't touch that. Don't touch that. What are your tips to work from home? Okay. All right, let's go. Give me a kiss. Say goodbye. Say bye-bye to everybody. You like that? Yeah, that, that's uh, mushy. Yeah, that's mushy. It, it keeps it from when you say the S sounds. It doesn't sound so bad. All right, give me a kiss. I got to go. I got to shut the door. Bye-bye. See you. Say bye-bye. Okay, just stick it open. No, I got to shut it because Grandpa's phone's loud. All right, bye. I'm sharing a workspace with Grandpa, so we have to um, shut the door, right? That's why it's important to have a door. What's James's favorite cookie? James likes all forms of cookies, so you don't have to worry about him eating cookies. Do I know any card tricks? Mm, I know them, but I, prob I have a problem with small hands. My hands aren't so good for card tricks because they're not particularly big. 
Having big hands is very, very useful for doing card tricks. I can do coin tricks. I can juggle, but I cannot do, uh, can't do card tricks so well. Not like I'd like to at least. <laughs> yeah, James is a funny boy. He's a good kid. You wanna see if I can juggle? All right, well. Uh, all right, this could go epically wrong. We're gonna try to juggle three chips. This one I got from LA. This is, uh, what's his name, Jerry Buss, is that right? This I got from, um, where is this? This is from a charity tournament. This is from Aussie Millions. We're gonna attempt to juggle. Okay, let's see if we can do it. All right, all right, all right. All right, there you go. Multi-talented Jonathan Little over here. Um, let's see. What tournament did I win at Hard Rock Cafe? It's not the Hard Rock Cafe. It is a Hard Rock Casino. It's in Florida. $2,000 buy-in turbo tournament. It was a good one. I won it, um, I guess, six months ago or so. What's my personal estimate on the World Series of Poker being canceled? It's actually not a tournament chip. This is a this is a weird five this is a five dollar commemorative chip or something. This is some weird chip. It's not it's not a tournament chip. They gave this to everybody because like they don't have five dollar chips, right? Weird, I know. What else do I have over here? Let's see. I have a literal quarter with the state of Utah on the back. Okay. We have Hollywood Poker Casino from 2011. Don't know where I got this. Have another one. Oh, here are these things. These are fun. Back in the day, when you won a tournament at Bellagio, they would give you a gold bracelet. Do I have it? They'd give you a gold bracelet. This thing is literally, what, 22 karat gold, something like this. I got this in 2009. You see that? This thing, back in the day, was worth $5,000. Literally $5,000 worth of gold here. Okay? That's, that's what they used to give you when you won. Then, they downgraded. They started giving away Rolexes. The Rolex is worth about 3000 bucks. Fine and good. We'll take it. Then they started giving away... Where'd it go? There's a trophy way up there. It's not very fancy. They started giving away that. And then... I won two tournaments back to back, and they gave me literally a card protector. So that was kind of a bummer. I was like, oh, sweet, I'm going to get a watch or um, a fun trophy at least. Just a card protector. Will they turn the World Series into an online tournament? Ugh, I think that's kind of a bad option because it's just like only New Jersey, only um, Nevada, which is kind of kind of lame. Being a dad makes you good at improvising on the fly. Well, I actually learned to juggle when I had Mr. James. I was sitting there playing with him all day, and he was kind of boring. So I found three balls we had, and I just started, like, all right, I'm going to learn to juggle these. So I learned to juggle those. What are my tips for playing short stacked poker? Play well. Learn, to, learn that situation. You love mastering small stakes in Illumina Hold'em. What do you suggest after beating small mid stakes sit and goes should you move to tournaments if that's your goal i mean tournaments are great for some people but not great for others right i mean like for example if you cannot um sit there and play poker for eight hours at a time tournaments are probably not for you right if i have two weeks of time to study anything how do i spend it studying if I, if I could do exactly what I wanted for two weeks with no, no uh, obligations at all, what would I do? It's a good question. Where do you grind your sit and goes? I don't play sit and goes. We talked about this earlier. Sit and goes are not a great way to make money in today's environment because of the low edge and the high rake. What's my study to play ratio? Depends on what you call study. Because I'm not like sitting there grinding simulations all day, but I'm talking to people who are better than me at poker for half the day each day. So what's that? Three, four, five hours a day? A lot of study if you think about it like that. And you all know, if you're not new here, 
that I only play poker about one week a month. But when I play, I play a lot. So, you know, 16 hours a day, seven days a month. Call it half time, I guess. And then um, when I'm home, I'm just doing lots and lots of work. What would I do if I could, if I, if I could do, uh, what would I, I'd probably learn Chinese. I think that's probably the play, right? I think that's what I would do. If I, if I like had two weeks and um, I could devote it to doing exactly one thing, learning exactly one thing, it'd probably be learning another language. And it's probably Chinese is the optimal one in today's environment. I know barely enough Spanish to get around. So I don't think I'd spend more time learning Spanish. So I, th I think I would, I think I would do, uh, I think that's what I would do. 16 hours a day, six days a week, 16 hours a day, seven days a week when we're playing poker. We're there to grind. You have to realize that I'm a professional poker player. I've been doing this many years and I am very, very immune to uh, getting burnt out from putting in hours doing something that's very easy compared to what I do normally. Live poker is very easy compared to my normal day-to-day -day job and compared to online poker in my opinion. Where do I go to play on poker stars? I go wherever I need to go. You can go to Canada. That's a nice, easy one for me. If you're going to get up to go to play poker, though, you need to get set up ahead of time if you're an American. You need to contact poker refugees and tell them that you need to get relocated. When I played sit and goes back in the day, were they live? No, I would 16 table, 200 to $2,000 buy-in sit and goes on party poker. Back in the good old days. But I did play some sit and goes live, but it's like a bad use of time if you're going to play. Imagine you can play $1,000 sit and go live and it takes an hour with like, what, 20, 30% ROI, so you make 20, 200 bucks an hour. Or you can 16 table $200 games. That's what, um, $3,200 invested in an hour. You make 10% back then. So that was 320 bucks an hour with no variance. So would you rather have no variance or lots of variance? Would you rather make more money per hour or less money per hour? I'd rather make more money per hour with less variance, personally. Uh, okay, you 3 x the button. I don't know what your hand is. On eight Jack 8-7, eight, you want to be doing a decent amount of checking. Oh, so you bet two-thirds opponent raises. What do you do? Well, again, it depends on your hand at this point. Some hands you call, some hands you re-raise. All right, I have to go now. I hope you all are maximally productive. We're going to recap it, though, before we pack it up. Um, remember, we are having a giveaway. I'm giving away $1,500 in the form of $500 and then 10 $100 bills. Cash, all for you. You don't, you, know, you don't have to spend it on my stuff. You can spend it on groceries or poker or giving it to somebody else. You can do whatever you want. Um, you can get entered in that at pokercoaching.com slash giveaway. So do that. Also, we have a big discount on my training products over at pokercoaching.com slash lucky. If you want significant discounts for the next few days, we're packing that up soon. But if you want significant discounts there, head over to pokercoaching.com slash lucky. Now's the best time to start studying. If you're stuck at home, you might as well spend your time productively. So, 10 tips to be more productive from home. Number one, dedicate a space in your home to be your work space. I have this closet here. Next, set work hours. Mine are 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. Next, start the morning off right. Enjoy your time. Enjoy the day. Number 3.5, click the like button. If you're enjoying this, click like, click share, leave a review. That goes a long way to helping me help other people like you. Next, number four, take breaks. Number five, stay connected with other people. Number six, get rid of distractions. Number seven, use the proper equipment. Number eight, embrace delivery. Number nine, cooperate with other people in your workspace. And number 10, have an immense amount of discipline. How much should you sleep if you're playing 16 hours a day? Well, you do the math. You get seven hours of sleep with that schedule. Lack of sleep, bad food. Well, no, you eat good food, clearly. Just because you're playing poker a lot doesn't mean you have to eat bad food. I travel with Living Fuel Super Greens, and I eat a lot of that when I'm putting in lots of hours. And, you know, healthy protein bars, lots and lots of water, lots of lean meats and vegetables, stuff like that. All right, have a great day again. Enter the giveaway at pokercoaching.com slash giveaway. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Stay safe, please. Please stay safe. Do things like wash your hands and um, try to avoid people who are coughing in your face. 
you all please be smart. I don't want any of you to get sick and I don't want any of you getting other people sick. That's that's not what we're trying to accomplish in life. We are trying to help others become the best they can be. And at this point, I think we need to be on lockdown. So spend your time on lockdown as productively as you can. Study a lot. Have fun. Make the most out of this fun time. We will make it through this.